Nick here and today you will learn how to play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion by going through the first scenario. You can find the link to the other scenarios on the description box. Setup Take the scenario book and read the introduction story on its cover. Then open the book to scenario 1. Take the sticker from the sticker sheet labeled Roadside Ambush and place it on B1 square on the city board. Each player chooses a character to play. If you're playing solo, choose two characters. The Demolitionist class is specialized in melee damage and obstacle destruction. The Red Guard specializes in protection and monster manipulation. Hatchet is best at ranged damage and looting. And Void Warden specializes in healing and support. Get your character's small and large deck boxes identifiable with the character symbol. Give each player a hit point dial and their initiative order token. Open the large box and take your character from the small box. Take the character mat and place it in front of you. Take the deck of smaller cards with no warning, and the first 6 cards from the larger deck that does not have a warning text. You should have the player reference card and all the cards with an A in the crown under the title. Keep the decks with warnings inside the box. Take the hit point dial and change the red side of the dial to the red number below the number 1 on the bottom of your character mat. Then, change the blue side of the dial to 0. Place all the character's initiative tokens near the center of play. Place your character's figure on any one of the starting hex icons. Note that you cannot have two characters on the same hex. Locate the scenario key listing to identify which monsters are used in the scenario. Locate their standees, monster stat cards, and initiative order tokens. Note that for scenario 1, there is only one monster type, the Vermling Raider. Place the stat card in one of the monster envelopes while keeping the number 1 on the upper left corner. Then place it next to the scenario book. Look at each hex containing a monster and check the rank indicator below the monster icon. Refer to the rows below according to the number of characters in play. Then, check the indicator inside the row. If it is black, don't place a monster on that hex. If it is white, place a normal monster, identifiable by the white plastic stand. And if it's gold, place an elite monster, identifiable by the gold plastic stand. For example, if we're playing a two-player game, I should look at the first row, and this hex indicates I should add a normal vermilion monster here. They can shuffle the 20 attack modifier cards labeled M and place them next to the monster stat card. Then, take the plastic token tray containing the game tokens and place it next to the scenario book. Check the scenario goal and read the scenario introduction. Sometimes, extra instructions will be listed here. And now you're ready to learn how to play scenario 1. Your objective is to complete the scenario goal of killing all enemies. The game is played in rounds. Every round follows this order. Card selection, ordering of initiative, character and monster turns, and the end of round. Let's start with the card selection. All players must select, in secret, two ability cards they want to play. You may communicate with other players to discuss strategy with general statements about their actions, but players cannot show their cards to each other nor give specific information about any numerical value or card title. The first thing you should do is look at your initiative number on the cards. Out of the two cards you choose, one card is played as the initiative card. The initiative will determine the order characters and monsters will attack. The lower the number, the higher are the chances you will play first. Let's talk about the card actions. Each card has a top action, and the bottom action. Every round, you must play the top action of one of your cards and the bottom action of the other card. For example, on their turn, the player decides to use these two cards. They decide the initiative number will be the one on this card, and the player will play the top action of this card, and the bottom action of this other one. Once all players have selected their cards, each player flips the chosen cards and compare the initiative number from one of the two cards. Take the initiative order tokens and place them from low to high based on each of these initiatives, like this. For scenario 1, enemies have a fixed initiative of 50. Once the initiative is set, starting from the top, going to the bottom, characters and enemies play their turns. 
we will talk about the character's turn and then about the monster turn. If it is a character, it's time to play a top action from one card and the bottom action from the other card in any order. Each action is read from top to bottom. If you play a move ability, you can move your characters up to the number of hexes stated on the card. You can move to any adjacent hex, even going through allies. But you can never end your movement on a hex occupied by another figure. And you cannot move through enemies, obstacles or walls. If you play an attack card represented by this symbol, you will deal the damage written here to a target enemy within range. If there is no symbol below the attack value, it means it's a melee attack, so your character needs to be adjacent to a target. If the attack has the range icon, it means it's a ranged attack, and the target needs to be within X hexes of the attacker. Example, this attack deals 3 damage to a target character that is within 2 hexes of range. Also, any targeted enemy must be within line of sight in order to be considered a valid target. To check this, draw a line from the target figure to the attacker. If it does not touch a wall line, you have line of sight. Note that only walls block line of sight. Obstacles and figures do not block line of sight. Some attacks also have the target icon. The attacker can target a number of enemies within the attack's range, but you cannot target the same enemy multiple times on the same attack. Once an attack is performed by a character or enemy, the figure must flip the top card of their modifier card's deck. Normally, you flip one modifier card per target you are attacking. But if you are doing a ranged attack and the target is adjacent to you, you must flip two cards and then apply the worst of the two. This is called disadvantage. If you flip a modifier card with a number, just add or subtract the number from the attack value. For example, this character played an attack ability with the attack value of 2. They flip a minus 1 card, so their total attack value is 1. If you draw 2x card, your attack value is doubled. And if you draw this symbol, the attack does no damage. Some cards also apply conditions to the target. These are the 4 conditions applicable to scenario 1. They stay on the target until the end of the target's next turn. Whenever an attack deals damage or a condition to a monster, add damage and or condition tokens on the stat envelope on the section corresponding to the target. When the number of damage tokens is equal or higher to the monster's health, the monster is defeated. Remove its figure and the tokens from the board. For example, this character is attacking monster 3. They deal 2 damage and muddle, placing 2 damage tokens and a muddle token on the monster 3 section of their envelope. The other ability cards are Heal, which allow the caster to heal a certain amount of health on themselves or an ally within range. Whenever you heal health points, turn the red side dial up that amount. Note that you cannot heal above the maximum hit point value. Some ability cards only target the caster, which is represented by this text. And some other abilities might grant actions to other players or allow the caster to destroy obstacles. When you grant an action to another character, use the character's own modifier cards. Obstacles are the hexes with a green outline. Figures cannot move to them. When an obstacle is destroyed, add a destruction token. Destroyed obstacles are now traversable hexes. Once you use your ability and modifier cards, place them on their discard piles. Now let's talk about monster turn. When the initiative order reaches a monster, if there are multiple monsters of the same type, elite monsters, which are the ones with the gold plastic stands, have priority. First, take a look at the monster's stat card. The white section contains the stats of the normal monster, and the gold section contains the stats of the elite monster. The first stat is the monster health. The second is the base movement value. The third one is the monster's base attack value. This is how a monster performs its turn on scenario 1. They focus on a target, then they move towards that target, and then they attack. Let's start with how they focus. The focus will be the character that the monster can attack using the least amount of movement. If there is already a character adjacent to the monster, then that character becomes the focus. Now let's go through the movement step. If the target is already adjacent to the monster, skip this step. If this is not the case, move the monster's figure the number of hexes on the monster's base move value. But you can never end the monster movement on a hex occupied by another figure, and you cannot move through obstacles or walls. If the monster cannot get closer, it will not move. 
Also, if there are multiple valid paths within range, the player decides which path to take. Once the monster moved, it will attack if it can. Take the monster's attack value and draw a modifier card from the monster's attack modifier deck, just like I did for the character. If the target character receives damage, take their dial and reduce the hit point value from the red side. If a character reaches zero on the red dial, they become exhausted. The figure is removed from the map and cannot participate in the game until the end of the scenario. If all characters become exhausted, the scenario is lost and you have to retry. Once everyone on the initiative order has ended their turn, the round ends. If any attack modifier deck has flipped over a card with the shuffle icon, shuffle the discard pile back to its deck. Play the next two rounds, until all players are out of cards in their hands at the end of the third round. When a character has at least two cards in their discard pile, they may perform a short rest at the end of the round. Take all the cards from the discard pile, shuffle them, and place a random one on the right side of the character mat in their lost pile. The rest of the cards return to the player's hand. Anytime you would rather keep the card that was lost, suffer one damage and draw another random card from the discard pile to place on the lost pile. Because you play two cards every round, you will need to do more short rests as you play. Be careful though, if you are unable to play two cards because all of them are on the lost pile, your character becomes exhausted, just like when it reaches zero health. Once you have killed all enemies, read the conclusion and reward section. Add sticker 2, a hole in the wall, on your B1 section of the Gloomhaven map. And that's how you play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion Scenario 1. If you want to jump to scenarios 2 or the other scenarios, you can find them on the description below or by clicking on the right link.